What up boys? So in this video I'm going to be talking about the impact of some of the priest changes or rather more specifically the disc changes uh, that we're going to be seeing in Shadowlands. I'm going to talk about how that's going to impact us in Arena uh, and a little bit about how it's going to impact us in Mythic Plus and the raid as well. Uh, as this was too long for the previous video. Uh, so we're going to go into a little bit more detail and kind of get into the nitty gritty of you know what it all means and whether or not it's actually good for us, how good it is for us and how strong we're going to be. So without further ado we're going to start with the spells and I guess we should start with uh, obviously my personal favourite Shadow Word Death uh, and why this is such a good change is specifically in Arena and this is going to make Disc so much more fun to play in Arena and the reason for that is because it's baseline. We've been asking for baseline death for so long and the reason is because you couldn't take premonition against the majority of classes. It wasn't worth a PvP talent against the majority of classes. You ended up just taking uh, a talent that was just generally more reliable. So now you can take different talents, still the, the more reliable talents because this is baseline. So against, for example, a monk who has obviously, obviously paralysis, you can death that. Uh, it's going to allow for so much more potential outplays. Uh, and just fun stuff that you can do to feel like you're, you know, getting that edge over the, your your enemies in arena. So not not only is it going to be more more fun, it's going to be, you know, a, a slight buff to us in arena for sure as disc. Uh, so this is this is fantastic for us. This is just going to make us definitely uh, one of the more interesting classes to to play or specs to play. Uh, if not the most interesting spec to play, just this alone. Uh, the second second new spell we got was obviously Mind Blast, and this is is not as impactful, I would say. Uh, I think it's a little bit undertuned uh, in terms of the damage number. If you take a look at Holy Fire on Holy, it's doing like 2.4k or something uh, on the initial damage, and then another 1k damage on the dot. I would argue that that's a lot more impactful than Mind Blast, even with the shield that Mind Blast is providing as well. I think that having that on demand damage uh, at a significant value is really, 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 really strong. Uh, and I think the Mind Blast doesn't have that currently, even though obviously it's doing atonement healing and it's it's providing that shield, which is a decent shield. The shield definitely doesn't need any love. Shield's in a good spot. It's stronger than a power word shield. But, uh, yeah, the fact that the damage component is so low is a little concerning to me, considering that, that it's a 13 second pull there. So, hopefully that gets a little bit of love uh, in coming weeks. That's definitely something I would like to see. Overall, it's not terrible. It's not uh, not a bad thing to be picking up. But definitely could uh, get a little bit more power on it. Uh, next one being Mind Sooth. I mean, again, we talked a little bit about this in the previous video, but this is going to be... Uh, really, really, I guess it's, I, I think it's a cool avenue to go down in terms of different ways of dealing with content. So it, this is this is definitely something that we didn't really have that much of before. But mind soothe and coupled with the the fade aggro radius reduction is gonna allow for some really really cool skips in both Torghast and Mythic Plus, and just potentially out in the world if you just want to avoid certain mobs. Um, you now have that that you know the tool to be able to do that, and I think that's really cool. Uh, and I think that's something that not even just disc, not even just priest, but like the game has been lacking a little bit in recent times. And and this is goes beyond just mind soothe, but it's been very much a like a one size kind of fits all game. It's like you're picking the least bad spell for a situation. Rather than having, you know, that vast range of spells that we used to have where we could pick the best spell for a situation. Um, so I think that this is kind of bringing that back a little bit. And that's really exciting to me because uh, I think that really signifies a change in Blizzard's mindset in general. Uh, so really, really hyped about that. That's good news. Good news. Um, what did we have? What else did we have? Ah, yes. Power Infusion. Uh, 
I think that power infusion coming back is fantastic. Like, to put it bluntly. Um, I think that having this as a utility and having utility in general was what Priest was about and was what made Priest really fun back in the day. You know, when people talk about how fun Disc was in Wrath of the Lich King and stuff, it was because you had so many different tools and, and avenues and decision making that you could do on every global uh, that ranged from damage to dispelling to healing to mana burning to utility. Like there were so many different options. Uh, so PI coming back is one of those options coming back. And the fact that it's off global is going to make it feel really fluid and enjoyable to use. The fact that you can use it on anyone you want uh, rather than just yourself means that there's definitely decision making involved in it. And when you use it well, it's going to feel great. So yeah, no, no, no downsides to this coming back in my opinion. Obviously, as long as it's balanced correctly, this is fantastic for disc and fantastic for the game. Uh, no, no complaints from me on that one. Um, the last one being Mindseer. Now, Mindseer is a curious one for me because we have Holy Nova and Holy Nova got buffed. So beyond the obvious of you can get people out of stealth at range um, and you can AoE packs without having to stand on top of them, which is obviously a requirement of Holy Nova. It's curious to me that they bothered bringing it back at all when they were buffing Holy Nova as well. Uh, I feel like there was a whole host of other things they could have brought back. And out of everything, they chose Mindseer. Despite Holy Nova getting buffed as well. So having two AoEs is going to be weird. I think maybe one of them is probably going to be better DPS. One of them is going to be better uh, in terms of mana efficiency. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see with regards to you know what the numbers and the tuning kind of say to us when the game goes live. Um... I'm not against it, but I think that there's definitely better things that could have come back. So this is probably, I'd say, the weakest or least interesting of the five spells that they brought back, in my opinion. In terms of spell changes, I guess the obvious big one has got to be Focus Will. So Focus Will getting a second stack, uh, once again, is really important for Disc, actually. Because we lost a lot of single target healing going from BFA to Shadowlands, right? We lost our Essences. Uh, we lost the Azerite trait for Shadowman stacking from the dot. Uh, and obviously we lost, as I said, Essence. We lost Vitality Major. We lost Voodoo Totem. So generally we lost a lot of single target healing potential. And assuming that the scaling and the tuning is good on like Shadowman and Penance, this is going to allow us to deal with cleaves that go on us in a more manner efficient and just better way um, than in Shadow, uh, in, in BFA, sorry. I dislike this talent in general because it's a passive and I would much rather see actual abilities um, that provide utility for us to mitigate uh, melee damage. But since we lack that, I think that having this stacking twice is important. And I'm really glad it's back. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that impactful in PvE at all. I mean, this is definitely a, a, a PvE tool. Uh, sorry, a PvP tool. It's getting late. Um, next change is Fortitude. Not a big deal in my opinion. It's gone from 10% to 5%. Not that much to say about it really. Like, potentially you won't rebuff it as much in PvP. But other than that, I don't think it's going to change anything. Um, it's not like you're gonna look for a, a healer and be like, ah, I would have brought a priest, but you know, four got nerfed from ten to five percent, so I guess I'll just you know take another healer instead. Like, no. So I, I'm guessing they nerfed buffs across the board, but it's yeah, they could have they could have left it. I don't think it changes anything. I think it's pseudo. Uh, as we talked about before, fade is reducing aggro radius in the same vein as mind soothe. I think we talked enough about that already. Uh, no, no extra detail needed there, I don't think. Uh, again, we talked about Holy Nova as well. Holy Nova is is doing 50% extra damage uh, if it hits three or more enemies. 
uh, whether that's gonna mean that our AoE is actually strong. I don't think so. Holy Nova was so weak last expansion anyway that I don't know how much extra this is gonna give us. Potentially, it's still just a tool for clearing old content. I don't think it's gonna be uh, our most valuable global in terms of DPS or healing. Uh, and I don't think it's gonna be the most valuable filler either, so. Unsure where they're, where they're looking to take this in terms of the change but again we'll have to see how the numbers pan out same thing with mindset and the last change this one's actually a, a really banger one this is rapture and this is something that we've been asking for for the whole of bfa pretty much uh since they put it on global is rapture off global well they this is the next best thing and basically an equivalent thing uh when you press rapture it will give a rapture shield to your target which is, is, is equal to taking it off global. And this is fantastic. This is going to make the spell so much more reactive. It's going to feel so much better to press Rapture now. Uh, and Disc is just get generally going to feel less clunky to play uh, under times of high pressure because we essentially get one global extra. Uh, so I'm really, really happy about this. This is a really fantastic change, both for PvP and for PvE. Uh, Big thumbs up from me. Awesome. This, you know, this is what we've been, we've been asking for, and this is, you know, we've gotten it. So, can't complain. Uh, as for talent changes, not many, obviously. We've got the Shadow Covenant change, and I don't think it's going to change that much for PvP. I think you're probably still going to go Sins of the Many, depending on how well Contrition is, uh, how well it's scaled and tuned. Because I feel like at the end of BFA it was tuned relatively poorly, the numbers were relatively low and it wasn't worth any more. Whereas in the first season it actually felt pretty good, so we'll, we'll have to wait and see how that looks. But Shadow Covenant I think probably still won't get used m most of the time in PvP. Uh, the 25% extra shadow damage is nice, but I feel like this bottlenecks you a little bit in terms of not being able to cast holy spells. Uh, I'm definitely going to give it a try. I think there's definitely certain situations and comps where it could be good. Uh, but yeah, needs more testing on that one. I don't want to. I don't want to rule it out. As for PVE, I think this is going to be really strong now in Mythic Plus. I think this is going to provide, with coupled with Schism, really a lot of on-demand AOE healing, burst healing even, which is something that we kind of lacked. Uh, quite a lot actually in in bfa like you have good aoe healing but not good good burst aoe healing right so this kind of will allow us to deal with a lot of different uh, mythic plus mechanics that before were annoying so really happy to see this change actually and after like four four different kind of versions of shadow coven i think it was they changed it like every expansion for a few expansions now it's nice to see them trying something different all the time when it's not working uh, and, and, you know, realizing, yeah, this is not getting taken, it's not working, we need to do something with it. So, hopefully now they've landed on something that will be usable. Uh, rather than, you know, completely giving up. So, pretty pretty interesting to get uh, interested to give this a try. Uh, the last talent tree change is Spirit Shell. And... The fact that this replaces Rapture is really sad for PvP because I think it's not going to see much use at all. Uh, and I think it's going to be a BFA final tier pick all over again where we took Lenience just because the middle talent made us weaker and Evangelism is basically like a really weak global when you're playing twos or threes. When there's a lot more players, Evangelism gets stronger, right? Because it works on everyone with atonement but when you've only got a few people with atonement you're essentially extending those atonements by less time so then lenience became the strongest talent and lenience is like the most boring talent in the game like let's be real so it's really a shame that spirit shell replaces rapture because i think right now in pvp especially since the buff rapture is insanely strong um but it's nice that they're trying to change something and and mess with the talent tree i just wish they would have done it a little bit more i think there's a few dead talents on the disc tree right now and a few uninteresting talents that could really if they put a bit of work into the tree i think this tree would be insanely fun to use uh 
in terms of different tools for different situations. So, you know, they're nearly there, but uh, yeah, it could use some love for sure. But nice to see they're adding new stuff and trying new stuff. Hopefully they just don't, you know, stop. It'd be nice to see a couple more things before uh, Shadowlands launches if we're not too late in the day. Uh, as for PvP talents, main one coming is Thought Steel. Uh, as we said, and Thought Steel is probably one of the interest, most interesting things I've seen them add in a few expansions. I hazard to say since like the introduction of Shadow of Death, like this spell looks insane, like insane. Uh, being on the receiving end of this is not going to be fun. I'll tell you that much. 20 seconds of being locked out. So I, I should explain a bit more about how it works. So basically it steals a predetermined spell from each class and it only works on mana users. Uh, so from mage you steal polymorph, from warlocks you steal fear, from druids you st steal rejuve, from monks you steal renewable mist, renewing mist I think rather actually. Uh, from holy priest you steal renew, from disc you steal penance, and from Shadow you steal BT. Have I missed any? Paladins. From Paladins you steal Freedom, which actually could be really cool. Um, I think the main two you're going to use it against is Warlocks and Mages. Because you can essentially... Not only do you get this spell, they can't use it for 20 seconds, right? So you basically steal an entire DR from them. Uh, where they can't, you know, sheep or fear anyone. Um, and using this, you know, when you guys are looking to do... An offensive push or something is going to literally allow you to cross the map try to push for your own cc it's going to completely change the dynamic of the match with one button push right and it's a minute and a half cooldown. i think it's going to be insane i can't wait to uh to test out the limits of, of this spell and i hope it doesn't get hard enough i really do because it, it looks absolutely insane so so hyped about this actually like most hyped i've been about any any new spell for disc in like yeah, since, since death. Um, and speaking of death, since we have death now, Premonition is gone. Uh, and people are concerned about the death cooldown. Death is actually an 18 second cooldown as opposed to Premonition, which is a 12 second cooldown. And I don't think that that is that big of a deal. Like, yes, the six, six seconds extra cooldown looks scary, but... If you get faked on Premonition right now, you're getting sheeped or feared or whatever before it's back up anyway. So that's not going to change. And if you get sheeped or feared or whatever, you're most likely getting a re-CC. At that point, death most likely back up. So I don't think that the cooldown is going to be that detrimental in that regard. The place that I do see it potentially being harsh is... If you're using it a as a damage spell or you're using it as an execute I think you're most likely against most stuff uh, you can potentially use it as a damage spell but against things like mages and warlocks you probably need to be a little bit more conservative with it and I don't think that's a bad thing I think that that creates a another avenue of decision-making where you have to decide is it worth it you know to use death for damage at this point what's the dr of his cc can he cc me before it's back up again can i get away with using it here for damage uh that sort of thing uh is it worth trying to get away with it for damage uh so i think that's fine i think that's cool i think if the cooldown was too low then that sort of decision making would be nullified a little bit uh so i think that's fine i think that's something that we're gonna have to learn to play with and i'm not against that uh, obviously, the last main change, I would guess, is the PvP trinkets not actually being a talent anymore. They're actually on gear now. Uh, and all three types are still there. Adaptation's another one. I just haven't got the trinket right now. But what this means is that you will only get one other slot for a trinket. Uh, as opposed to the current two, two trinkets that everyone's running around with. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that it means it nullifies how valuable PvE trinkets are. Uh, I'm not going to go into gear as such in this video. I'll do that in another video. But there's definitely some really good PvE trinkets. 
Uh, and they've, they've done a lot of changes with PvP gear and adding a set bonus to the trinkets and stuff like that to try and dissuade people from using the PvE trinkets. As I said, I'm going to go into that in a completely separate video. Um, and we'll talk all about that. But for now, uh, I think that's that's everything I wanted to say with regards to the disc changes. Uh, overall, I think we are feeling strong. I think that it definitely comes down to the tuning. I think if tuning is good for us, if it's kind to us, then disc will be in a healthy spot with the new tools at our disposable. Disposable? At our disposal. Going into Shadowlands. So I'm, I'm actually happy with the changes. I'm really happy with them. Uh, I think that we could use some more love, like, as I said, in the talent department, but overall, we could have done a lot worse. So, I will definitely be playing Disc come end of October in Shadowlands. I can't wait. I think it's going to be really fun. And I think, I think Disc and, well, both Disc and Holy have the potential to be really fun in PvP in Shadowlands. So, definitely something to look to pick up if uh, you've enjoyed it in the past, for sure. Uh, if there's anything that you think I forgot with regards to the, you know, analytics, the, the mechanics of these spells, opportunities, you know, ways that they're going to buff or nerf us, please let me know. I'm really interested to hear kind of different people's opinions because I definitely haven't thought of everything. Let's be real. Um, if there are any other videos you'd like me to make or any other things you'd like me to talk about in more detail, I am all ears. Please let me know in the comments. Uh, but yeah, for now, thanks for watching. Have a good one.